My name is Dana Steele. I am running to be the Congresswoman for the 36th Congressional District of Texas. I have some really, really, thank you. I have some really amazing boots to fill in that it's sort of kind of the district that Nick Lampson served until they finally gerrymandered him out of it. Um, one of the most amazing congressmen we've ever had for the area. And I, can, I hope, I hope I can live up to the incredible job that he did. The 36th Congressional District, my man, includes Jasper, Texas, yep. where I spent the 20th anniversary with the Byrd family at a picnic around James's grave 20 years ago, and it's still so strong and so hard to imagine. The 36th Congressional District includes Orange, where that Confederate monument just went up and countless other areas in nine counties proudly flying a Confederate flag. It includes that sundown town, and not just that one. There are sundown towns all over my district. And when I decided to run, it was because I wanted to run for good. I knew we could be better. And when I found out nobody had even bothered to run for this office as a Democrat in the last election, I started asking around, and it's because people said, oh, no, it's too scary. And it's like, no, we can't be scared anymore. We have to get out and do things. I have to do this because I was raised by Bill and Fran Nicholson to be kind to others, to tell the truth, to always do for others. And listening to you sing, my mother at St. Luke's United Methodist Church, she would sit up in the balcony because my brother was a handful and she knew she had to sit up there and keep an eye on him. So she would sit up there and practically sit on my brother's scooter. And then she would sing. And I come by my tone deafness, honestly. <laughs> my mother was famous for her singing voice at St. Luke's United Methodist Church and it was nowhere near yours. In fact, it was on the other end of the spectrum. But she didn't care because she felt that joy and she felt that love. And I took that with me into everything I've done. You know, I was a rock and roll DJ for 22 years. What's spiritual about that? Well, the answer is what I tell people when they say, do you miss it? And it's like, no, I don't miss the radio. I miss the connection with people. I miss telling you you need a jacket today. You need an umbrella. Here's where you can go if you need a food bank. Here's where you can go after the hurricane. I miss that connection of being able to do things for others. About four years ago, my husband and I started giving laptops to high school students trapped in poverty. We thought we would find one a month. Boy, was I living in my little privileged world, wasn't I? Then it became two a month, it became three a month. 350 laptops later and 350 stories of generational poverty, new poverty, uh, opportunity gaps in health care, in education, the prejudice, the racism. I said, I gotta do more. This one, one laptop, one student, one solution was good for a while, made me feel good for, a, you know, about a year or so, but we gotta be able to do more. And about two years ago, I started speaking out. Now, I've been a business speaker for about 10 years, and I've always told people, don't talk about politics, religion, or cats. You will chase off half of your customer base. And you can pretty much pick out the cat people from that. Um, but I started speaking out. There was a man running for office that was mocking disabled people. There was a man running for office that was encouraging people to hate immigrants and to hate people of color. I was not brought up this way and I couldn't fathom it. I couldn't understand it. So I started speaking out. People said, oh, you're breaking your own rules. I'm like, but we have to. Just like you said, we have to. Why are we here with Vote Common Good? Because we have to. We have to stand up and do something. We are better. Before I close today, my son, who's 22 now, one of my sons, um, he was 16 years old when we got into a huge arg argument. He used an argument as leverage for coming out, thinking that would work. He was still in trouble. He still got sent to his room. But I stayed up all night and I wrote him a letter. And he still has this letter. I said, you know, I don't care if you're gay or straight. I don't care if you're from Mars. 
I want you to be honest. I want you to be kind. I want you to treat people with respect. I want you to do for others. I want you to respect people. I want you to find somebody you love and you respect them and you take care of them and you do for them and you make sure they do the same for you. And I would expect that of you whether you were gay or straight. I expect that from your father. I expect that from myself. I expect that from your brothers. I expect that from anybody I associate with. And when I saw it wasn't happening, I knew there were people like you that thought like I did, that thought like my family. And so I decided to run for Congress. And I promise you right now that when I get into that office, we're not going to have a Jasper again. We're not going to have an orange with Confederate monuments. We're not going to have sundown towns. And I personally have to go to each and every one of these towns. And when I first decided to run, I wanted to put together a bus tour. And I wanted to take my white friends and my black friends and my gay friends and my straight friends and my Muslim friends and my Jewish friends. And I just had this great vision. I was going to get a bus. I was going to put everybody on it. And then I found out how much it cost. I'm so glad y'all are doing this. <laughs>